Shivai children, good morning. So I hope you are clear with the fifth chapter that is morphology of flowering plants. Now we will move on to the next chapter which is chapter 6, anatomy of flowering plants. Right. So morphology we saw, we we'll studied about the external structure of the flowering plants. Here we will be learning about the anatomy. We will see what is anatomy. So, you can easily see the structural differences and variations in the external morphology of larger living organisms like plants or animals. We can easily find the similarities. Same way, we can find the differences also. Okay, That is both in plants and animals, we can easily find the similarities and differences. Similarly, if we were to study the internal structure, portal appearance and jamal kandal kanda, jamal differences and similarities we are able to find. But if we are going to study the internal structure, one can also find similarities as well as differences in it. Okay, so in this chapter, you will be learning about the internal structure and functional organization of higher plants. Right, higher flowering plants are internal structure and how is the functional organization? How do they carry out various functions inside them? So that is what we are going to learn in this chapter. So what is anatomy? Study of internal structure of plants is called anatomy. Okay, so it is a study of internal structure of plants. Plant in the internal structures. So, we will learn the anatomy. And we know that all living organisms, their basic unit is the cell. Same way, plant has cell as the basic unit. And the cells are organized into tissues. Now, if you a multicellular organism like plant in the body, work in it is through organization. Structural organization is there. And how is the structural organization happening? It has the basic unit which is called as the cell. Okay. And these cells will organize into tissues. And these tissues in turn are organized into organs. Right. So, this is how the organization of the organisms happen. Okay, and different organs in a plant show differences in their internal structure. It means that different organs means a root, a stem, leaf, everything, they show differences in their internal structure. Okay, and not only that, within this flowering plants or angiosperms, the monocots and dicots are also seen to be anatomically different. Okay, so think if we learn the internal structure, we will see the differences and also the similarities. And when you study about the flowering plants, and if you see this flowering plants as two categories as monocots and dicots, in them itself, the internal structures are showing differences. Okay, and not only that, these internal structures also show adaptations to diverse environments. changes They are adapting themselves to, uh, to the environment in which they live. Right? So, this is about the introduction of this chapter. Now, let us move on to the chapter. First, let us learn what is tissue because this chapter fully, you will be learning about the different tissues in the plant's body. Right? So, what is anatomy? It is a study of internal structure of plants and other organisms. Here, we will be learning about plants only. Okay. And now, moving on to the tissues. What are tissues? So, we all know uh, cells are the basic unit. So, tissues is a group of cell having a common origin and usually performing a common function. Okay, a group of cells together. A group of cells in the another, a function chain, or a group of cells, they will be together forming a tissue. So, a tissue is a group of cell having a common origin and usually performing a common function. One common function is tissues are See, cells are there. Cells who do same work will combine to form tissues. One of work is one origin of cells are form tissues. Okay. And a plant is made up of different kinds of tissues. Okay. Their body is made up of different kinds of tissues. 
and tissues in plants are classified into two main groups and these two main groups are meristematic and the permanent tissue okay but full uh, e plant and the plant is completely made up of different type of tissue and tissues in plants can be classified into two one is meristematic tissue and the other one is permanent tissue okay and how are they classified they are classified based on whether the cell being formed are capable of dividing or not if you produce in the cells divide in the do illeo other base the turn tissues are divided into two so based on whether the cells being formed are capable of dividing or not tissues can be divided into two one is meristematic tissue and the other one is the permanent tissue so first let us see about the meristematic tissue and then we will move on to the permanent tissue so we know that growth in plants is largely restricted to specialized regions of active cell division okay and such places are called as the meristems okay so a tissue is a group of cell having common origin and function and based on the capability of the cell to divide or a cell to divide and patto illio on the base it is done meristematic tissue uh, that is tissues are divided into two one is meristematic tissue and the permanent tissue now if you take the case of the meristematic tissue these are the tissues which have active cell division and growth occurring it means that so growth in plants is largely restricted to specialized regions of active cell division evidiyana growth kaanikku ore plant il evidiyano active cell division nadakkuna avade aayirikkum the plant will be showing growth so these specialized regions which shows active cell division is called as the meristems ഓക്കെ എവിടെയാണോ ആക്റ്റീവ് സെൽ ഡിവിഷൻ നടന്നുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്ന ആ പ്ലേസസിനെയാണ് നമ്മൾ മെറിസ്റ്റംസ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് സോ ദ വേർഡ് മെറിസ്റ്റംസ് മീനിങ് ഇൻ ഗ്രീക്ക് ഇസ് ഡിവൈഡഡ് സോ ദ ആക്റ്റീവ് സെൽ ഡിവിഷൻ ഹാപ്പനിങ് ടിഷ്യൂസ് ആർ കോൾഡ് ആസ് ദി മെറിസ്റ്റംസ് ഓക്കെ ആൻഡ് പ്ലാൻസ് ഹാസ് ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് കൈൻഡ്സ് ഓഫ് മെറിസ്റ്റംസ് പല ടൈപ്സിലുള്ള മെറിസ്റ്റംസ് ആണ് ഇവർക്കുള്ളത് ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ ദ പൊസിഷൻ so based on the possession of meristems they are divided into three types okay so plants have different kinds of meristem and the meristems are divided into three types okay and it is based on the possession evideyano ee meristem ulla adu base edu they are divided into three type so first one is the apical meristem okay and the second one is the intercalary meristem and the third is the secondary or lateral meristem okay so based on the position of the meristem that is active cell division nadakkuna aa cells evideyana ullu adu base edittu the meristems are divided into apical meristem intercalary meristem and secondary or lateral meristem okay before we learn about these three types of meristem in detail we should know about few important characteristics of this meristems see these meristematic tissues they are small cells they will contain small cells and they have dense cytoplasm okay and they are thin walled our cell wall thin aayirikum and along with that they have large nuclei and they don't have any intercellular space adinte artham cells inde nadukku space undavilla okay it will be like this cells will be arranged nearer to nearer it won't have larger space between the cells right so these are the few common characteristic of the meristematic tissue okay one is they are small cells small cells i und they can form n number of cells cheriya or space thanne they can form many cells and they have dense cytoplasm dense cytoplasm will help them to increase the respiration okay uh, so that is why they have dense cytoplasm and they are thin walled their cell wall is thin because they can easily divide they are active cell dividing cells appa vegam ad carry out cheyan vanni they have thin cell walls okay and along with that they have large nuclei also now let us learn about the uh, three types of the meristem 
okay so how is it divided it is divided based on the position of the meristematic tissue a meristematic tissue or a plant il evidiyano ullathu adu base edu they are divided into three apical meristem intercalary meristem secondary or lateral meristem let us see the first one which is the apical meristem okay so this apical means the word apical means it is nothing but apex tip portion okay tips ilana e apical meristems undavu so they occur at the tips of roots and shoots and they produce the primary tissues called the apical meristem okay so they will occur at the tips of roots and shoots and produce primary tissues so they are the one who produces the primary tissues and it is of two type one is root apical meristem and the other one is shoot apical meristem you can see it here this is the root portion of the plant and this is the root apical meristem okay and here if you take the shoot portion it has the shoot apical meristem okay so this is the meristematic zone where the cell division will happen clear so depending upon the position of the meristem the first one is apical meristem and where is this apical meristem present it is present at the tip of roots and shoots and they produce the primary tissue and there are two types of uh, apical meristem one is root apical meristem and the other one is shoot apical meristem as the name says root apical meristem nu parayunnathu it occurs at the tip of a root ore root inde tip il aayirikkum idu occur aayunnathu and what about the shoot apical meristem the shoot apical meristem it occurs at the tip of stem axis you can see it here so it is it is occurring in this portion ore shoot inde stem axis laana idu kaanunnathu okay so the tip most portion of the stem axis will contain the shoot apical meristem okay and some cells left behind from shoot apical meristem will form the axillary bud okay and they are present in the axils of leaf and become a branch or a flower okay for ee shoot apical meristem il they will form i mean it will occur at the tip of the stem axis and all these meristems will not turn into roots okay so some cells will be left behind from the shoot apical meristem and they form the axillary bud what do they form they form the axillary but you can see it here the the formation of the axillary bud and these axillary buds are the one which present in the axil of the leaves and becomes a branch or a flower okay the axillary buds are the leaf and axis le present i they will become a branch or a flower okay unna chillagalayittu maarum allengil adu flower aayittu terminate cheyu okay so this is about the apical meristem okay so what are the two types of apical meristem one is root apical meristem and the other one is the shoot apical meristem where does the root apical meristem uh, occur it occurs at the tip of the root and the shoot apical meristem will appear at the distant most region of the stem axis and during the formation of the leaf and elongation of the stem some cells left behind from the shoot apical meristem will constitute the axillary bud okay so what is the use of this meristem they carry out active cell division appa the root tip il undavumbo when it is found in the root tip you can see in the root tip they have the meristem right so when they are present in the root tip it will increase the length of the root appa root inde length ne ingane increase cheyidondukum by cell division and in the same time if they are present at the stem axis or in the shoot portion what happens during the formation of the leaves and elongation of stem ividium increase in length aanu happening and during that time some of the cells are left behind and they will form into axillary bud okay and these axillary buds will either give rise to branch or a flower understood it so this is called as the apical meristem clear with the children okay now let us move on to the next one